Hey folks, today is Friday, August 2nd, 2019. As usual, my name is Jake Baldito. We're here to talk about the video game news that has been going on all this week. Let's get you caught up. Uh, a lot of businessy type news stuff this week, so let's just go right into it. The first bit involves GameStop, of all places. We've talked about them quite a bit and how uh, they are rapidly failing. At least that's how it seems. That seems to be the writing on the wall. Uh, we've talked about their bailing out on ThinkGeek. What are you doing? What are you doing? Don't worry about it. Are you making fun of me? The newest bit of news that was an internal thing that was leaked and then reported on uh, was the statement that GameStop is making changes to how it manages its districts and its regions on like a map of the United States, at least its North American operations, and have laid off roughly around 50 people. These are key strategic people uh, in both HR and regional and district managers. You know, district managers, right? You worked in retail. This yeah, is a, Glenn comes by. They're all this. annoying. No, I mean, shout out to district managers out there if you watch and you do your job, good. Also, uh, not making light of the fact that they lost their jobs. That's terrible. It also goes to show that uh, now the managers who are managing different districts, groups of stores, would go from something like 15 stores in their area that they manage to 20 or more. Uh, not to mention that, combined with less HR people, uh, there's definitely going to be some sort of dip in quality control here uh, and quality of life in work. The restructuring GameStop has positioned it as somewhat of like a, them kind of looking for how they are going to be going forward, what their future is, what GameStop is going to be moving forward. Uh, this is still unfortunate for people to lose their jobs. Honestly, I'm very curious to see when they're going to throw in the towel because like a buyout didn't happen. I, I, I just, something's got to give soon with this. Really, uh, if you work at a GameStop or a similar game retailer, I want to know your thoughts on the current state of things uh, because it is very interesting and volatile and who knows what's going to happen next. The other bit of news I want to talk about is console prices and the potential of them rising. Sony has gone on record stating that the newest possible Trump administration tariffs would actually directly impact console production and manufacturing. They have stated this expressly and they've also gone on record saying that they are looking at options on how to react. There is the possibility of them raising the price of consoles and passing on the added cost of the tariffs and the production onto the consumer. That is a realistic thing at this point. This combined, of course, with a few months ago, all of the big three companies joined forces to kind of put out a formal letter uh, essentially to the government saying, hey man, hey man, that's how Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft talk. <laughs> these moves, these potential tariffs could stand to both uh, impact production, impra uh, hurt consumers, and ultimately they had projected a loss of something like 200,000 jobs. So that is food for thought. It is definitely something that is not concrete yet, but it is worth exploring and it is worth being prepared for if it's a if it's a potential thing. Also, that's all I'm really going to say about that because that this could be a cesspool. So let's just move on. Now in other news, in case you missed it yesterday, uh, Activision and Infinity Ward had a big live stream revealing and finally detailing Call of Duty Modern Warfare's multiplayer. Quick highlights, uh, there is a realistic mode, which I have played, uh, it's really cool. Strips down the HUD, makes you rely on night vision goggles, makes you carefully aim. They also reiterated that there is no season pass, there is going to be an open beta rolling out in September, and there is going to be a 100 player game mode. Uh, I'm going to link in the description, as well as everything else we talk about, but I'm, I'm gonna give you guys uh, just like our video and just some information if you do care about that stuff. I'm still just holding out for them to show off the single player campaign, because I think there's huge potential there. but. I've been saying that for weeks now. But in other news, we got a couple of things we've linked in the description, some trailers for you to watch and catch up on. The first uh, is a newer, deeper look at Persona 5 Royal. This kind of shows a lot, you know, gameplay, characters, stuff like that. Check that out if you're curious. Also, wait, what do we got here? We got a little quick teaser for No Man's Sky Beyond, which they have announced is finally dropping August 14th. Uh, all we really got was a very, very quick look. Doesn't show you much, but uh, No Man's Sky fans around here, like in the office. Also, we got a new little video that announces that The Outer Worlds is coming to Switch. I think that's really exciting. I think that's a cool game for the platform. Uh, they have stated that it is not going to hit release when Outer Worlds releases on you know consoles and PC. The Switch release will be later down the line. Still, I think the option is cool. I'm just curious to see how the hell it's going to perform. Hey! Speaking of the devil... What's up? What's up? 
You got to play uh, Outer Worlds. I did. Come tell us about it. What? While holding pizza. Mm. Or I'll hold it. What do you think about Outer Worlds? Uh, it was good. It was fun. It's very much, uh, if you're a fan of New Vegas, so, you know, you're, you're going to love it. It's just that, but like way more sci-fi. What did you get to play on PC or PS4? PC. Nice. It was very good, actually. Yeah. Like, surprisingly you... good. Is this the upside down slice? That's mine. Sorry. No worries. I didn't touch it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I mean, I didn't eat it. <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, Outer, Outer Wilds is fun. Worlds, Outer Worlds, Outer Worlds, Outer Wilds. I can't keep up. Outer Which one? There's not Outer Wilds. Outer no. Worlds is good. If you like New Vegas, you're gonna like this. Surprising. I was surprised by like the emphasis on melee combat, actually. Yeah. Which is cool. What about quests? Did you do side quests or main quests? Uh, I did mostly side quests, and it's very much just kind of like works how any other rpg would work where like one side quest as you're like traveling to like get from point a to point b you come across like three other side quests and uh, a lot of options you know like kill everything talk your way out of it scare people intimidate people yeah stuff like that you know just your typical just like rpg nonsense will you play the final game though when it comes oh out? yeah sold oh, on. Okay, yeah cool. totally Sweet. sold on it I, funny too approved yeah like it actually, was that's like, what i noticed thanks for the insight cool can i eat my lunch now yeah also, if you're looking for some interesting video game reading this weekend, uh, I always recommend stuff like you know, we should be well-read on video games when we talk about them. Uh, I've linked a interesting story about Metal Gear Solid's English translation. It's fascinating. Go check it out if you're into that game. Curious to see what you think. Now, in other news, a article or, or quotes that made headlines that I think take a little more looking into is uh, Sony and Microsoft, that whole partnership, that cloud agreement thing that they had a couple months ago that people thought was this big thing. Uh, Microsoft has now taken turn to kind of clarify it. After Sony did and they kind of downplayed it, uh, Microsoft actually is saying that it's a pretty cool thing. The CEO of Microsoft, Satya Nadella, recently went on record and said some interesting things. He actually said that it was actually more of a move on Sony's part. Sony pursued this thing. But he said to look at it as like two companies trusting one another in the sense that Sony saw Microsoft's infrastructure and their Azure technology uh, and they wanted to get in on that. He said, and I quote, it's a beginning for us. So we will do the best job for them, whether it's in cloud or whether it's an AI or what have you, in order to make sure that Sony can succeed with their own IP creation. So I still think, and I've said this before, I do think this is more of like a political move. This mor this memorandum of understanding uh, is, is more of like some sort of olive branch and, you know, a shared benefit technology growth initiative. But Nadella's quotes here I thought were actually pretty interesting. He was a little more candid about it and forthcoming. Just something interesting for you guys to read if, if you like to read that stuff. Uh, go ahead. But in other news, let's talk about Fortnite for a second. Sorry, uh, but I, I think this is big as a, as a grand scheme thing for the industry. So the first thing was Fortnite World Cup, catching you guys up. Uh, that went down last weekend just over in, uh, right over in Brooklyn. And uh, the winner was 16-year-old Booga, who uh, won the whole thing and won $3 million, which is nuts. So look at that young man winning $3 million. And now anytime your mom yells at you, you could just bring that up. That'll shut her up real quick. My dad sent me an article from Newsday about him. I was like, why can't you do this? The other news, I think it's kind of industry adjacent. It doesn't really uh, it's fit with where we are. But Ninja has announced uh, the big Twitch Fortnite streamer. He's announced that he is now exclusively going to be streaming on Mixer, the competitive Twitch service thing. And I think that is absolutely wild and unprecedented. That is a crazy move against Twitch, honestly, which I, I'm not like a big streamer person, but I just pay attention to this stuff. A lot of people came at me being like, why are you talking about this, Jake? Even though it's separate, it's something that like a lot of us, maybe we don't even watch him. Uh, it's still like a rising tide kind of floats all ships thing. So I think it's fun to pay attention to. He definitely probably got paid millions and millions of dollars by technically Microsoft because they own Mixer. So uh, that's very interesting. I think ultimately this is going to be a good move for the next Halo because... Uh, Ninja was initially a Halo streamer. Do you see? Do you see where this is going? Like, do you see what they're trying to gear up for? I, I love the idea of him being like, "Hey, Fortnite kids, check this game out. It's called Halo." Really, I'm curious to see what you guys think. I want to hear from you guys who do watch streamers on Twitch all the time. What do you think this move means? Maybe you're a Ninja fan. How do you feel? Uh, but on the flip side. Maybe you're one of the people who were like, who's Ninja? I want to know what you think. Like, be be rational. But regardless, uh, moving on to something completely different, but uh, a game I love very much, Doom. Uh, we missed the news last week briefly uh, at the very end. Uh, they surprise dropped 
Doom 1, 2, and 3 on all the current platforms, including Nintendo Switch, which was kind of cool. I appreciate stuff like that. Uh, but there was a bit of an issue because the game required you to mandatory log into a Bethesda.net account or create one if you don't have one, uh, which was kind of shitty and stupid, but Bethesda has announced that they are changing that. I know it's like the hits just keep on coming for Bethesda and people will love to get riled up over this, but can I just like... That's, I get it, but can I just stop and talk about how good Doom is? Doom 1 and 2 is like, is like a fine wine. It's like an aged whiskey. It's perfect. It's still so good. This is my plea to you. If for some reason you've never played the original Doom games, get out there and do it. Do your homework. But that's really all the stuff I wanted to talk and ramble about this week. That's the news that is now catching you up on gaming stuff. But before we go, let's do that console giveaway we do every single week. You know how it goes down by now. There's a link in the description below. You click it to sign up. You enter once, then you enter for good. And then every single week we go in and randomly choose one person to win a free console of their choice. And this week's winner is going to be... This person, this person right here, congratulations, be sure to keep an eye on your inbox, your spam box, stuff like that, because we're going to be reaching out to you to find out how we can send you your free stuff. Now, before we wrap up, this episode is brought to you by our friends at Audible. They have an unmatched selection of audiobooks and content, and we bring this up, we're excited to talk about it just because I always say we spend so much time talking about games on the internet, we might as well do our homework on them. Audible is perfect for that, especially if you're like me, you're in a populated area, maybe say you're sitting in traffic or on public transit. With Audible, you can listen to stuff and improve your brain. Currently, I'm trying to refresh myself by listening to The Last Wish by Andrzej Sapkowski, kind of just getting caught up on Witcher stuff before the show drops. Uh, also, if you're interested, I can definitely recommend Console Wars by Blake J. Harris. They have a convenient app so you can pick up where you left off and listen wherever you are. And with a subscription, members now get more than ever before. So you can just kind of devour all types of knowledge that you can get your hands on. So here's what you do. You start listening with a 30-day Audible trial where your first audiobook and two Audible originals are completely free. So visit audible.com slash game ranks or text game ranks to 500 500 to get started today. And thanks again to Audible for sponsoring this video. Now we should talk about all the stuff going on. Number one, Ninja, that whole thing. That's crazy. Uh, what do you think about that? What do you think about the state of esports after the Fortnite World Cup, if you care about esports? Uh, also, what do you think about the whole Microsoft Sony handshake agreement partnership? What do you think it's really gonna do? And are you excited for the Outer Worlds? Like we said, we've all played it here. We like it very much. Uh, would you play it on the Switch version? Would you wait? And of course, if you work at something like a GameStop, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the current predicament of the companies uh, and just the climate out there for retail gaming stores in general, man. Let's talk. But thank you guys for coming around and watching us every Friday. Seriously, uh, we appreciate it. Uh, clicking the like button is the best way you can actually genuinely help us out. We would appreciate that. And if you're new, consider subscribing and maybe hit that notification bell because we put out videos every single day but as always thanks for watching we'll see you guys next time pizza's on me